coach and today I'm gonna do a basic intro for Artifact for you. I'm not gonna talk about any exceptions because that's just confusing at this point. This is really for the people who play Artifacts the very first time, who want to understand what's happening there, to understand all the effects and how to play that game. Don't worry if you don't understand everything that's happening at the beginning. I will explain everything in due course, but uh, just try to get one after another. It will make sense after a while. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so at the very beginning you pick the AI deck, you start playing normally or whatever you play, you check, um, start playing and you see the heroes you play and the heroes he plays. All the units, and that includes the heroes and the creeps, they have attack value and health value. Some of them have armor, and in, dis in difference to other games, the armor is nothing that can be beaten away or so. It's a continuous effect. So every time this unit gets damage, it will get one less damage. This unit has four attack and eight HP. Yeah, The units facing each other will always make the damage to the opposite unit. So those are making the damage to each other, those two are, those two aren't. The ones that are free, they make the damage to the tower. So in this case, our Legion commander, she distributes the six damage to the tower. If he would put something here, he can do that. You have a start with three mana. Every tower has the same mana number and each tower can spend that individually. What you cannot have individually is your hand. You have that for all three lanes. You always start on the left lane, then go to the mid lane, then go to the right lane. There's one more effect in this game, something called retaliate. And retaliate means, if you click on it, when the unit that has retaliate is attacked during combat phase, it like attacks back or does damage back. In this case, the Legion commander, he has two retaliate. So that means if something attacks, for example, with two attack and four HP, it will get two damage back. The other effect you can see on the Enchantress is regeneration. Regeneration means that the unit heals this amount during the combat phase. The different amounts, they can vary. In this case, it's two. And it actually does it during the combat phase. So it does not eat the damage and dies. Um, but it regenerates at the same time. So if this unit would get exactly 8 damage, for example, it would actually heal itself during the combat phase and only eat 6 damage. Um, hero's act, uh, passive ability is that she has 2 regeneration and the neighbors as well. So in this case, this creep deals 2 damage, but she regenerates for 2, so there's nothing happening. The same is for this creep. Whenever you're done, you press the combat button. Here's the next round. We have again three mana, this is the cards. You can only play cards matching the color of your heroes. In this lane, we cannot play any black or red cards. We can only play green cards. In this case, this has costs five mana. As you can see on the top left, we don't have anything to play. Here we can see the retaliation. You see, this applies the five damage to the HP but she has one armor, so it's actually only four. She, on the other hand, deals the six damage to our Sven, but because Sven deals damage to her, it's another two extra damage due to the retaliation. The cards that you're allowed to play, they have this blue little frame. So what we can do, I can show to you, you just read what the things do. Choose an allied red hero and another unit, they battle each other. Battling means that they pretend to be in battle and they um, apply the damage and eat the damage that's happening. I'm just gonna do that for demonstration purposes. So we pick this unit, we pick this. This is applied, so five damage minus the armor, so the four, and this is it. So both dies. E every time something dies, there's a big red cross <laughs> and you know you have to do something in order to protect it. And when you are done, you click the fight button. You take turns one after another. So unless there is, you play special cards, it's your turn to play one card, then it's your opponent's turn to play another card. And it always goes forward and backward. So there's not this um, queuing of actions or queuing of spells like in other games. You actually do one action and the opponent reacts. After each, um, after each phase, after each combat, like after each round, there comes the item shop. And depending on the gold you've generated, I'm going to talk so about that in a second, you can buy items. In the middle, they come from your decks that you've chosen. 
um, left and right are random. To buy items, I'm gonna buy them for demonstration purposes. And after, in each phase, if you have heroes in your fountain, you get to do, uh, you get to decide where to put your hero. Generally speaking, you wanna have a hero in each lane. Not gonna go into detail now, so we are gonna put him here. And when we are sure we want to do that, you click the button. Now we got one mana more on each lane. So now we have on each lane four mana to distribute to play our cards, which stay for the whole round. If you apply items on your heroes, they can only be applied on heroes. There's consumables like here, you can apply on creeps or on any unit, but the items you put on your heroes, they are permanent. Um, so you could, for example, decide that this Legion Commander should get more attack or more health and you apply your item on her and then she will get whatever is printed on that item. In this case, it has the plus four health and this will stick with her now, forever. Most of the cards you can play are for that lane. So you have the green hero and you play a green card and normally you have to apply it in that lane. There's cards where you see the little arrows um, on the card to the left and right. This means you can play that on a different lane as well. So choose a lane, modify alleys in that lane with three health. We could now ch check and we see, oh nice, there are three alleys in this lane, we want to do that. And you drag it to that lane and all of those, the effect will be applied. This hero brings another effect into the game, which is called cleave. This means basically that if this is blocked during combat phase, basically just means something lies in front of it. Um, it will deal the normal damage, like in this case 5, but it will also distribute damage to the neighbor of the unit it battles. So we see what he does here, he's blocked, he distributes, he distributes 5 damage to this creep, he's regenerated by 2, so he only gets 3, the enchantress gets 2 damage from this creep, and she gets two damage cleave from the Sven, so it would be normally four, but she regenerates by two. Now again, we could decide to apply an item. We do that, we just drag it on the hero. They have three slots. One is for attack, one is for armor, and one is for health. You can only have one item in each slot. If you apply another item, this item will get, get overwritten. So uh, you can do it, it's expensive. The gold generation works the following. Um, if for killing a hero, you get five gold. For killing a creep, you get one gold. Again, we have to decide, it's a new it's a new phase. We have to decide where to put our heroes. As a rule of thumb, you wanna have two left, two middle, one right. In artifact, most of the heroes have active or passive abilities. That is this little square you can see here. Um, we have already learned about the regeneration passive ability of Enchantress. We have already learned about the retaliation um, purpose of the Legion Commander. And if you look at Phantom Assassin now, you see that she does an extra four damage when attacking a hero. So this attack value is actually a six. It would be a six if attacking a creep. It is a 10 when attacking the Enchantress. She regenerates by two, but it's not enough. She eats the eight damage and she dies. This is row bound. It doesn't have arrows next to the mana cost, so we could play it here. Or we can decide to play one of the row unbound cards, the flexible cards, on one of the other lanes. There is creeps. This is a typical creep. It is basically a unit. You play on the board. It has attack. It has health. Then there are spells, like this. You play something. It does something. This one would modify a red hero's for attack, but there's many different ones. And then last but not least, there's improvements. An improvement is basically an improvement you put on a lane and it stays there until the end of the game. So this improvement, for example, it costs four mana. You have to play it in the lane where there is a black hero, but you can put it to any other lane. I will put it in the mid lane. <coughs> Just so you see what's happening here. We have one mana left. We could make two damage to a unit in any lane. I'm gonna just do it now, you just drag it to the unit you want to make the damage to. There's passive and active abilities and passive and active improvements. Normally you see the active abilities and improvements when they glow. Heroes do the same. When they have an active you need to click on in order um, for it to happen, it will have be like shiny. Here as well. This is an active improvement, so you have to click on it if you want to deal the two piercing damage to a unit. 
There's two kinds of damage in this game. The one is just normal damage. This is the one the grazing shot would do. Damage means it does not ignore armor. So if this has seven life, you put two damage on there, it goes on five. If you put that on the Legion commander, for example, who has three armor, the two damage is not gonna do anything. It's different with piercing damage. What piercing damage does, it ignores armor. Unless it's minus, then it's added up. But if there's a positive armor, which is normally the case, the piercing damage will go through and directly attack the life. So in this case, if you do two piercing damage on him, on her, it would be it would go down on six life. Oh, we didn't even speak about the, the goal of the game yet, right? <laughs> so the target of the game is to get the opponent's well, he has three towers and you need to get two towers. You can do it either by distributing the 40 damage to two towers each, or when this one tower falls, it will go to 80 lives and you can get it double. So you can make the 40 first, then the 80 on the same tower, or you make the 40 damage on two towers. If you do not have a hero in the lane, you cannot play anything. You can always use your items, even without having a hero. But besides that, so we could heal the creep if we wanted to, but you cannot play any cards. You can, well, there is creeps who have abilities. You basically have to read always what's printed on the card. The regeneration is only applying during combat phase. So if you do the exact damage right now, so if I could distribute eight damage on Enchantress now, it would die. It just regenerates during the fight. There's items that have active abilities that you actually need to use. For example, if you apply the face boots on him, it's gonna stick to her. It means you can swap this hero with another ally anytime. You can do it every second round. You see that on the cool dime, it says active, active two. Um, and if we swap that now, you remember this one has the passive ability to do four extra damage when attacking a hero. This regenerates, but not enough. So we go to combat phase, we kill the hero, we apply the damage to the tower to everyone else. There is one more, um, there's one more mechanic in the game. It's called Condemn. And I actually think that's the last one. I think we are through with the, with the different mechanics of the game. Condemn means it ignores, it's not a damage spell, it condemns. So if there would be a hero in that lane, you could um, target it with a coup de grace and it would die. It would just die, um, no matter how much life it has, um, how much attack it has, or which mechanics it has, there is uh, no way to protect that. It, uh, there is a card called Slay, it does the same with the creep as well. So Condemn is just a mechanic of that game. We can here now apply our Steam Cannon, our improvement. The piercing damage is only in that lane, you can see that. And this can go to a unit in any lane. Normally the things are in that particular lane. If they can go on all lanes, it's printed on the card or on the improvement. So we can make four damage. And we can decide where we want to do that. I will put it on the Legion Commander so it dies. We just get some gold. We are rich. I hope I get to buy an expensive item. And now what happens is we kill the tower. So this is the first tower we kill and you see what happens, it goes down to zero. The second the heart tower comes out of there and it goes to 80 lives. So now we have two options. Option number one is we get a second tower, which would have to be this one because it looks really bad on the right lane, or we can make the 80 damage on the mid tower. Okay, so now we will actually have the opportunity to play our coup de grace. So we read again what's printed on the card. Discard a random card from your hand, by the way, and condemn a hero. So we apply that on the Enchantress, it's gonna get condemned, we discard a card, we cannot do anything against that. Nope. When you use consumables, they are one-time effect. So you heal a unit for six, it's one time. When she gets any damage, that's it. It's not a continuous effect. Even if you have two Im same improvements in one lane, you can still use both of them. So you cannot, there's no limitation on how many improvements you can have to one lane. You can see again that the, that everything that would be an active where you have to do something in order to play it is glowing. You can see it here. The face boots would be ready. So they all have the shiny frame. The um, blink dagger would be ready. 
you can move the hero to another lane with that. This one is an active. And here our improvement glows, so like has this shiny frame, so we know this is ready as well. We can draw a card, it's considered a consumable. We can make the piercing damage, I think we do that. The piercing damage, you see it ignores the armor and it does the two damage directly to the HP. So this creep dies. Again, he is dying, so he needs to put something in between here. Okay, so now we got this tower. We have two towers down from 40 lives. And now we won that game. Well, I hope you enjoyed that a bit and that you had a chance to get a feel for the different mechanics. It's a lot when you start. I mean, there is this intro, like the intro game. There is a tutorial, which actually is pretty good. And I would um, advise you to take the time to play that and to really understand what you're doing there. But it will still feel for a couple of days like there's all the stuff going on and you have no idea what's all happening at the same time. That goes away after a couple of days. It's really worth it. Um, sticking to it and trying to wrap your head around it. I hope you enjoyed that a little bit and I hope to see you at the table.